Good morning. So we've heard over a number of years uh, at the SSE and elsewhere about zero-point energy, vacuum technology, and that this is the, the ambient zero-point energy background is going to provide energy that will meet all of our needs, and yet it hasn't happened. <laughs> and uh, today what I want to do is ask the question from a fundamental level, why? Is there, in fact, the possibility of obtaining continuous power from the vacuum, or are we deluding ourselves? So let's take a look at some basic uh, principles behind uh, obtaining energy from the vacuum. So the first question is, what is vacuum energy? And uh, we can see, oh, I'm sorry, that's not the right type of vacuum energy. Let me try again. So the question is, what is vacuum energy? Uh, and it is zero point energy that fills all the space. Sorry. Just okay, thanks. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, I prefer to be able to walk and, and right, I'll just keep it. Down. I'll talk louder. Thank you. Uh, so the question is, what is uh, th this, this energy? We know from quantum mechanics and elsewhere from the uncertainty principle that there is energy uh, in every uh, mechanical system and that this energy never goes to zero. And that's why it's called zero-point energy, because even at zero temperature, there still is some energy in the system. Not only is there energy in every uh, physical system, but there is energy in free space itself, in the vacuum. And this takes multiple different forms. Uh, the form that we're considering right now is electromagnetic fluctuations. And so you can visualize this as being a vacuum where there's blip, 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 little bursts of energy here and there. And these bursts of electromagnetic energy cover uh, the entire spectrum of uh, frequencies and wavelengths. If you take a look at this analytically, we can see that uh, there are two parts to the radiation in the vacuum. Uh, the first part is the thermal radiation. This is the Planck distribution. And its source is temperature somewhere of something. The second part, the h bar omega over 2, uh, occurs even without any sort of source in free space. And it's been known for a long time. It's the zero point energy. And it's this energy that we're talking about. And we want to see now, can construct that comes out of uh, quantum mechanics and are able to, to explain uh, the, just this from a, from a uh, analytical level. Mm -hmm. And the answer is that there are a number of physical manifestations for uh, zero point energy. I'm going to talk only about, uh, whoops, that is dead. Uh, I'm going to talk only about two different uh, physical manifestations to this zero point energy. One of them is the Casimir force. Uh, Casimir, in 1948, sh uh, showed uh, theoretically that if you have uh, two plates that are reflective plates, uh, that in between those reflective plates, because of uh, the boundary conditions and interference, you have only a limited number of electromagnetic modes that can exist. Whereas outside of those Ca this Casimir cavity, you can have all electromagnetic modes. And so we can see that, whoops, uh, that within the Casimir cavity, uh, we've got uh, only modes corresponding to uh, wavelengths that are shorter than twice the gap spacing for the Casimir cavity, and outside all. And the result is that there is more radiation pressure outside than inside, and so these two plates are attracted together. Casimir predicted this in 1948, and over the years, people have been measuring it, and most recently have been measuring it to better than 1% accuracy, and shown that, in fact, Casimir is right. So there is this Casimir force. It's real. Vacuum energy is palpable. The second example that I'll give right now has to do with vacuum fluctuations and noise. And we know that in electronic devices, resistors, diodes, and so on, that after you get rid of all the other sources of noise, there still is some basic noise, and these fluctuations are due to zero-point energy. So this is well known. The stuff is real. Now the question is, uh, can we use it? 
And uh, the answer is uh, we haven't done so yet. Uh, there are uh, a number of different proposals for getting energy from the vacuum, but as far as I know, none of them has been reliably uh, uh, carried out and uh, is reproducible. So is this because we haven't found the right way, or is there an underlying principle that limits us here? And let's take a look at this. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is look at uh, three different classes of inventions on extracting energy from the vacuum and see what the underlying principles uh, are for each of these classes. The first I'm calling nonlinear extraction, and it involves getting using these random fluctuations that we have somehow and extracting energy from them. The second is mechanical extraction, it uses the force in Casimir cavities, and the third one is something different, and that's passing uh, um, material, atoms, gas, through Casimir cavities. Let's take a look at the first one. So the first one uh, has been described in a number of different places, most completely uh, recently by uh, Thomas Vallone. Uh, this year, he wrote a paper called Proposed Use of Zero Bias Diode Arrays as Thermal Electric Noise Rectifiers and Non-Thermal Energy Harvesters. And the basic idea is making use of a diode. And I show uh, from his paper a band diagram for a diode where electrons can move more easily downhill than they can move uphill. And that means that if we've got random fluctuations, they're rectified, meaning that uh, it we'll get more in one direction than the other. We ultimately end up with DC power. So let's take a look at the underlying principle here. Um, in, 19, in 1871, Maxwell uh, was looking at the second law of thermodynamics and proposed a demon. And his demon was a little fellow who would go through and selectively alter uh, a, a process so as to make entropy decrease and break down the second law of thermodynamics. The particular picture that I have here shows the demon allowing uh, dark particles of gas to go to the right, but not light particles to go to the right. So he opens this little door and lets gas through only one way than, rather than the other way. The same process can be carried out for heat and various other uh, f uh, um, phenomena. And in that way, one should be able to reduce the entropy and break the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, many different uh, Maxwell's demons have been proposed over the years, uh, some of them very ingenious, and one by one they've been picked apart and we find out that it doesn't work. And actually, uh, the fundamental reason has to do with information theory, but that's for, for another talk. So uh, that means that if we are talking about a thermal uh, distribution in equilibrium, we cannot obtain energy from it. We cannot contain power from it. Uh, why not? Uh, you can look at it uh, in a kinetic way using Einstein's uh, detailed balance. In 1917, Einstein discussed the fact that detailed balance exists. If we have a multi-state system in equilibrium, that in that system, every process, every transition rate in one direction is matched by an equal and opposite transition rate in the other direction. And so by detailed balance, the, uh, the, there can be no net flow between any two states. This always occurs when we are in equilibrium. Again, uh, this was uh, looked at initially for thermal equilibrium. And the question is, does this also apply to zero point energy? Well, it turns out that zero-point energy is a true equilibrium state. Uh, this has been discussed in the literature for a number of years and shown very rigorously by Dannon in 2005. So that means that in a zero-point energy, as with thermal energy and every other sort of energy, you cannot uh, uh, create a nonlinear extraction from fluctuations. Even though the diode uh, allows electrons to go one way more easily than the other way, in thermal equilibrium there's detailed balance and the electrons go 